Hello everyone, it's Michelle, and in this wrap video, I'm gonna be going over the juicer and how to use it as well as the cooking pot. But wait, first, did you know that they added recipes in the game that will actually give you a boost to your character? Meaning, stuff that will make you run faster, stuff that will make you swim faster, and stuff that will even prevent you from dying? In this video, I'm gonna explain all of that and how you can craft these recipes and what they do for you. Let's get started. When loading back into my raft, I went up to my cooking pot to prepare to make some meals, and I noticed that some things have changed. For example, on my cooking pots that I have here, I had more recipes than what's being demonstrated here. Some of them disappeared entirely, and some of them I noticed even that the recipes themselves, the names changed, as well as the ingredients. You will notice now that raw meat is an ingredient in the cooking pot. But in this video, I'm gonna be showing you that with these new recipes, because they've done an entire rework on the old recipes themselves, there are now recipes that will give you food buffs in the game, as well as juices that give you buffs in the game. So I'm going to be going over all of those and showing you exactly what they can do. In Raft, there are five recipes that are specifically locked behind the trading post. For those of you that are not aware, the trading post is located at Animal Islands. I have done a video that has gone over the explanation process of ranking up your reputation to reach tier three for the trading post. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's worth your, the watch. But once you have reached an Animal Island, which is where you need to go to get these specific recipes, you need to go over to the trading post and you need to make sure that you have trash cubes as well as trade coins with you. Specifically, you're going to need five trash cubes and five trade coins. In order for you to get other recipes though, you're going to have to open up some of the little boxes that are around the map, like on the floating rafts or at the top of islands. Basically, any crates that you can find, you can unlock the other recipes. When you do reach the trading post, open up the cash register here and let's go into tier one and buy. So when you scroll through, there's four things that are highlighted. Now, some of these recipes you will notice are very similar to what we've had in the past. In fact, Catfish Deluxe is an older recipe, but if you notice, it looks different because it has a bluer background. I want you to read this very carefully though. A recipe that can be cooked in a cooking pot, no joke, okay? Well, it makes you run faster. Yes, now these recipes, the ones with the bluer backgrounds, actually give you buffs in the world that you wouldn't normally have. We've never had buffs in the world that would make you run faster. If you look at red beet shot which is actually a juice it adds some extra hearts to your life your character yes salmon salad a healthy salad that increases your lung capacity meaning that you can swim much longer in the water kind of like an oxygen tank now i'm going to be testing all these out with you guys but i'm just showing you this one right here spicy pinberry makes you swim faster so those are four recipes there but the best one in my opinion for you solo players out there who are doing stuff on your own is hearty stew this is a mysterious stew that lets you evade death once so for those of you that are tackling those final islands and you're having trouble make this recipe and i'm going to be making them with you now the hearty stew costs one trash cube and one trade coin so let's buy that and all of the other ones cost one each as well so i'm going to buy all of these recipes and i'm going to make my way back to the raft Upon loading into RAF for Chapter 3, I noticed that immediately logging in that I had access to the juicer. You do pick up the blueprint from one of the previous islands. I'm not exactly sure which one it is, but you do pick it up, and this is the resources that you need to learn it. When I loaded in, I had to go to, over to my workbench, and I went ahead and learned it here. But this is what it costs that you need to research in the workbench. Wood, plastic, a bolt, fine goo, and a circuit board. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and craft the juicer. To craft the juicer, you go into your food and water inventory, and then you look over here to where it says cooking tables you have the cooking pot which are those are the resources for the cooking pot and this is the resources that it costs to make for specifically the juicer once you have built your juicers you can go ahead and place them down anywhere on your raft i'm just going to place mine in the open area since this is where i'm going to be doing my testing with you and for those of you that are familiar with the cooking pot it looks exactly the same where it has four different spots where you can place down different food items and yes there are going to be recipes for this specifically there's eight however i'm going to be going over the food buff ones the drink buff ones if you will the ones that do extra things for you so one thing different that you will notice compared to the cooking pot is there's no place to put wood Rather, there's a place for you to put a battery. Unfortunately, this thing is battery powered, so you're going to need to make sure that you have batteries available and a way to charge those batteries or a way to make new ones. Just like with the cooking pot, you have the ability to place down your recipes on the back of it. So go ahead and place down the two that we picked up for the juicer that give you the buff. And let's look at the recipes together. 
For these two recipes, you'll notice that the only difference between older recipes is that they have a white background, and again, the blue ones, which give you the buff, have a blue background. Now, the recipe themselves are going to be different because these ones specifically include items that you have to buy out of the trading post. So, for example, Red Beet Shot requires turmeric, and Spicy Pine Berry requires the chili. So we actually have to buy those as well too from the trading post. Make sure that you have your trade coins as well as your trash cubes and let's go ahead and buy as much chili as we can. You can only get five though out of each animal island. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to click on chili and I'm going to buy all of it. I'm going to click on turmeric and I'm going to buy all of that as well. And there we go. They're out of stock for each one of these. But now in my inventory, I have enough to make five crafts of that juice. We're going to start off by putting the recipes on the actual table. So first starting off with red beet shot, which requires two raw beets, one coconut, and one turmeric that we got from the actual trade post. And then we're going to place over here on the other cooker, one pineapple, one chili, and two strawberries. And in case you're not aware, you get the strawberries from Tangaroa Island. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and then place a battery over here on the left-hand side. And then when you're ready, go ahead and press E to start cooking. It takes two minutes in real time to craft these two recipes. Once you are ready, you'll go up to it and you'll notice that it says it requires a drinking glass. What you need in order to create the drinking glass is you need glass. Now you will have to have learned the drinking glass in the actual workbench, but you will need to have research glass beforehand. Go ahead and craft this and one glass yields four cups. Let's go ahead, pull that out and pick it up. And you notice that it only gives me one per. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the other one, and I'm going to hold on to this for later to show you what the buffs do. The next thing that you want to do is go into your food and water tab, and you want to make a cooking pot, which requires six planks, six plastic, two metal ingots, one bolt, and four vine goo. Once you have that made, go ahead and place it on your raft. I'm just putting it down next to my juicer, and I'm going to be placing my three food buffs specifically on here. Um, like I said, I'm going over the food buffs and the juice buffs with you first, then I will go over the older recipes with you. Unlike the juicer, the cooking pot actually requires wood to fuel, so you're going to need to put wood at the bottom. Once you have the cooking pot loaded up with wood, you will notice that the recipes for these particular ones actually require some of the same ingredients from the previous juices over there. For example, the turmeric as well as the chili. That's why I mentioned that you want to buy the whole inventory stock off the animal island. However, there's one other thing that we need to buy, and that's right here. And that item that you need to buy for the hearty stew recipe is actually called juniper, which is located right here. And it costs three trade coins per transaction as well as one trash cube. And like I said, I would highly recommend that you buy the entire stock while you are here. For the cooking pot, it works the exact same as the juicer does. It has four little white spots where you can put down all of your food items so that you can then put it into the, the cooking pot to make the recipe. I'm going to put down on all the items, and I'm also going to test how long it actually makes to cook each specific item. So Catfish Deluxe, you can see it right here. Oh, and by the way, you do not actually have to own any of these recipes. Because I'm showing you this here, if you actually put down this recipe yourself on your own cooking pot without actually buying it from the trading post, you could still craft it. So that's a good idea for you guys that don't don't actually want to buy this recipe. If you just want to look it up, you can still put it down. You don't actually have to buy it. But you can see the recipes here. Salmon salad, salmon, mango, or a pineapple, silver algae, um, and then also turmeric. Uh, put that down. Hearty stew. Let's put this down as well too. Juniper, which is from the trading post, which is a little bit expensive. There we go. And I'm going to be putting down a timer for all of these. Once you are ready, make sure that you've loaded every single one of them up with wood and then go ahead and start them. And all three of these recipes took two minutes in real time to cook. Once you are ready, you do need a clay bowl to extract these. Clay bowls can be made in the food and water tab. You click on the clay bowl item right there. And one craft, which is two clay, will yield four bowls. So make that and you'll get four bowls on your hot bar. And go up to each one of the cooking pots and grab it. And you'll notice that it has a little star effect coming off of this. And that's because this is a very special meal. Each one of these crafts, by the way, only yields one cook. 
to test these new recipes, I have Tyrant right next to me so that we can see what each one of them does. Now, on my hotbar, you will notice that I am a default character. I do not have anything equipped on me. And the first recipe that I'm going to be trying with you is going to be this one right here, the spicy pine berry. Makes you swim faster. Now, Tyrant does not have any flippers on him, nor does he have anything that is going to help him swim faster. So I'm going to go ahead and consume this. And what we're going to do, guys, is we are going to race from this this um, seaweed right here all the way to the one that's in the distance and we're going to see obviously how faster it makes you and this is again without any flippers on you so I'm going to go ahead and drink this let's go under just a little bit and on the count of zero we'll go okay three two one zero go one thing I also want to point out to you guys is that towards the bottom, you will notice that there's a green icon with a circle. That's how much time I have left with this ability in check. And there you go, that's how much I was able to pull ahead of him. That was actually a lot faster. So let's go ahead and equip flippers and see if it actually does anything with that too. So go ahead and equip your flippers, Tyrant. I have them on. Alright. Three, two, one, zero. Oh my god, this is fast. This is, um... Yeah, you're pulling literally. well ahead of me. Holy crap. <laughs> so, with flippers, and with this particular brew consumed, you are so much faster in the water, which is going to make navigating some of the, like, Caravan Island, where you have to go deep down, or even on the, uh, what, Varuna Point, a lot easier and faster and easier for you. Yeah. The next buff drink that I want to test myself is called the red beet shot and all that does is add some extra life extra hearts to your life basically it gives you more health so let's go ahead and consume that and see what it does and not only did that give me an extra boost to my health bar that you can see down there I could potentially consume two of them to reach the full capacity it seems but it also gave me a water buff just like the the previous drink the red beet shot the next food item that I want to test with you is called the salmon salad and it is a food that increases your lung capacity, meaning it's basically going to be like the oxygen bottle. Now, I don't have an oxygen bottle on my person, and neither does Tyrant, so we're going to test this and see how long it takes us to drown. So I'm going to go ahead and consume this now, and whoever starts drowning first calls it out, so that way we know how long this thing actually lasts. So I'm going to go ahead and consume it here, and let's go under. And that gave me a food buff as well. So my oxygen is going down at about three quarters there. I just hit the halfway point. I'm not even close to the halfway point yet. I'll let you know when I hit halfway. Now I'm at the halfway point. And I'm drowning now. Go. So it's doubled. It's doubled. It's literally doubled. So consuming this food, consuming this food basically doubles it. So you don't have to have an oxygen tank, basically. So my next question is this, I, by, which by the way, I still have oxygen. Um, my next question is this, how much longer does it last when you have an oxygen tank? So I'm going to need you for that as well, too. So I still have oxygen. And now I'm drowning. And I'm nearly out of my second oxygen bar. <laughs> okay. One thing I also want to point out is that when you sleep the night, the food buffs do drain a lot faster. Kind of like how a smelter works, where you load all the stuff up into it, all the wood, and then you put the item in there. Uh, it does make the timer go down a little bit quicker. So I had to actually make up another plate for this last and final test with the salmon salad. And this is, again, the one that makes you uh, breathe a little bit longer underwater. So what I'm going to be testing with this is I want to know, does it make it longer if you wear the oxygen bottle? So I'm going to go ahead and consume that. Now, Tyrant, are you wearing an oxygen bottle? I am not. I have okay. to head on. All right, three, two, one, let's go down. And we're going to see how long it actually takes. Yeah, this is this it's is running. ridiculous. Pulling up. So combine the salmon salad. So if you actually combine the salmon salad, which by the way, I still have oxygen as I'm explaining this. If you combine the salmon salad with an oxygen bottle, 
your time underwater is going to be incredibly extensive. So you're going to be able to explore and do everything that you need to harvest resources or explore different islands. And now I'm out of oxygen. I did time that on my phone. You lasted a minute and 50 seconds. A minute and 50 seconds. <laughs> that is ridiculous. The last dish that I need help with testing with Tyrant is going to be the Catfish Deluxe. Now, this recipe itself makes you run faster. Unfortunately, there's nothing else in the game that makes you run faster other than now, apparently, this food. So I'm going to go ahead and consume it. And what we're going to do is we're going to run from this tree here all the way to the bamboo in the distance. And we're going to see how much faster I am with this food consumed. So let's go ahead and consume it. And on the count of zero, we will run three two, one, zero, and make sure you're holding shift, by the way. Holy crap. Come through here. And I'm at the bamboo. That's awesome. That, that is, is nice speed boost. Yes, it is. I really like that. Now, there's one last and final recipe that I need to test with you, and this one is most invaluable in my opinion, especially for you solo players. It's called Hardy Stew, a mysterious stew that lets you evade death once. So, for this, I need to meet up with Bruce, and we're going to have a fun time. To test the Hardy Stew, I am going to meet up with Bruce, so let's consume this, and you'll notice that towards the very bottom, I have a little skull with an X through it or a little slash through it. I'm gonna go in the water. I am gonna equip an oxygen bottle because I don't wanna die from, from the lack of oxygen. I wanna die from Bruce himself. For this clip here, watch very carefully towards the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. Look at this health right here. This bite should kill me, but look what it does instead. It gives me health. Him biting me gave me health. And you will also notice that the little icon towards the bottom with the skull with the slash through it is no longer there. So basically, I have used my buff. It has given me health back. It has given me a second chance, yes. However, I should point out that you need to be careful when using this even still, because now that, that skull is gone, meaning that if he comes by now and tries to kill me again, I will die. So you will have to consume another hearty stew for this. If you are a person who likes to get all the achievements in a game, there's one that is actually quite rare that not a lot of people have, and it's called Powered Up. In order to obtain this, you need to eat those five recipes that we just cooked and tested out together. So when you do have those, go ahead and consume all of them at the same time. And there you go. Achievement unlocked, Powered Up. On the raft wiki, it shows the following ingredients that you are looking at to yield these specific recipes. However, I should point out that some of these recipes are no longer in game. For example, drumstick with jam, fish stew, and fruit compote. I'm going to go ahead and gray out those areas too so that you know not to make those because they're no longer in game. I also noticed that they disappeared out of my cupboard because I had plenty of those crafted up prior to chapter 3. The other thing that I want to point out too is that all the recipes that you see in front of me, all of them take 1 minute and 30 seconds. Basically, when you look at the, the images of the recipes on screen, those ones take exactly 1 minute and 30 seconds to craft, with the exception of vegetable soup as well as simple fish stew. Those ones take one minute in real time to craft. The other exception to this are the ones with the blue backgrounds, the ones that do the extra bit of help for you. Those ones take two minutes. So basically the vast majority of them take one minute and 30 seconds. Now, crafting a clay bowl and going up to each one of these is going to yield one. One for every single one of them. That is something that is incredibly new as well, too, because in the past, with the cooking pot, certain recipes would yield up to three, like, for example, shark dinner. That one used to yield three, but now it only yields one. I'm not sure why they've done that, but that is a change that has happened in-game, as well as the time it takes to cook them, and that's for the cooking pot. For all the recipes that come out of the juicer, every single one of them does a minute and 30 seconds, with the exception of two of them. The, the exceptions are strawberry colada, which takes one minute to craft, and the other exception is coconut beet, which also takes one minute to craft. But everything else, like the manganana, red melon, and the silver smoothie, and also the simple smoothie, takes one minute and 30 seconds to craft. 
And obviously consuming one of these items, one of the juicer items will give you a water buff right there that you can see on my hot bar. And if you consume a food item, I already have a food buff right now because I had consumed a food item long ago, but you will notice that it boosts my food bar a little bit further past what it can normally hold. The last and final thing that I want to say is this. With the removal of some of the recipes in the game, as well as the changes in the balances of how many plates of dinners and foods that you get out of each recipe, I think that it's an important point to point out is that if you open up your book, book and press T, you'll notice that you have vending machine tokens. At Tangaroa Island, there is a vending machine that you can use to buy and purchase meals from the vending machine. So I honestly feel like now I would almost rather do that than to like literally go around and harvest materials because some of the materials like silver algae that are literally difficult to come by or there's not many of them to begin with at a particular island can be a bit of a pain in the butt to deal with. So that's my two cents on it. But I do hope that this video was helpful for you and that you learned a little bit new about the juicer as well as the cooking pot and you also learned about those new food buff items and hopefully you got your hidden ach your achievement as well too. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.